nitrogen means N2. First of all, dinitrogen was discovered by Daniel Rutherford in 1772. First of all, dinitrogen was discovered by Daniel Rutherford in 1772. So this, this uh, Daniel Rutherford was the discoverer of dinitrogen. Next, we will talk about preparation. So if we talk about the preparation, commercially dinitrogen was prepared by the air. Commercially dinitrogen was prepared from air by liquefaction or fractional distillation. Means commercially we can able to prepare the dinitrogen from air by liquefaction and fractional distillation. But if we talk about the laboratory preparation, if we talk about the laboratory preparation, we have three methods. What are those three methods? First one is by thermal decomposition of what do you mean by thermal decomposition? Thermal decomposition means breaking of the substance by using heat. So, by thermal decomposition of ammonium nitrite. Ammonium nitrite. First method is the thermal decomposition of ammonium nitrite. Now, ammonium nitrite is not, uh, not present in the nature. We have to prepare ammonium nitrite on the spot for, uh, while we are uh, preparing the nitrogen. For the preparation of ammonium nitrite, we will take the equivalent mixture of NH4Cl and NaNO2. What is NaNO2? NaNO2 is the sodium nitrite. Sodium nitrite. So, we will take the equivalent mixture of NH4Cl and NaNO2. Then, we will get NH4NO2 plus NaCl. Now this NH4NO2 is ammonium nitrite and being unstable, it decomposes. It readily get decomposes on heating to gives N2 plus H2O. This is our first method. What is first method? By thermal decomposition of ammonium nitrite. First of all, we will prepare ammonium nitrite in the laboratory by reacting equimolar mixture of these two. That is ammonium chloride and NaNO2. And then on heating ammonium nitrite, we get N2 plus H2O. In this particular method, we get the impurities of impurities of NO impurities of NO and HNO3 and these impurities we can remove by passing through aqueous, aqueous H2SO4 containing K2Cr2O7 K2Cr2O7 so in this process we get the impurities of NO and HNO3 and we can remove these impurities by passing the solution through the aqueous H2SO4 containing K2Cr2O7 because we know that dinitrogen is present in the gaseous form which we have studied in our previous video in the anomalous behavior of the nitrogen that due to weak Van der Waal force of attraction it exists as a gaseous it exists as a gas at room temperature so while passing the gas through the aqueous H2SO4 containing K2Cr2O7 the impurities of NO and HNO3 can be removed from the nitrogen this is our first method. Now we will talk about the second method. Now what is second method? Second method is by thermal decomposition. Thermal decomposition of ammonium dichromate. Ammonium dichromate. Now, here also we have to prepare first ammonium dichromate and then we have to prepare N2. For the preparation of ammonium dichromate, we will take the equimolar mixture of K2Cr2O7 and NH4Cl. We will take the equimolar mixture of these two. These two on reaction gives NH4 whole twice Cr2O7 plus KCl. Clear? And this... Ammonium dichromate on heating decomposes to gives N2 plus H2O plus CrO3 where this CrO3 is known as chromic oxide. This CrO3 is known as chromic oxide. So here also we get an impurity of CrO3. Now the third method is by 
thermal decomposition of thermal decomposition of sodium or barium azide na n3 and ba n3 hold twice this is sodium and barium azide why it is azide because in previous video also we studied that nitrogen can uh, can combine with its atom up to only three atom and form the azide ion that is n3 negative so by the thermal decomposition of sodium azide and barium azide we get n2 and from this method we get the purest form of nitrogen from this we get the purest form of nitrogen and the reaction is like this na n3 on heating gives na plus n2 ba N3 hold twice on heating gives Ba plus N2. So these are three methods from which we can prepare nitrogen in the laboratory. We can prepare nitrogen commercially also, and I told you that commercially we can prepare nitrogen from air by liquefaction process or fractional distillation, and we can prepare nitrogen in the laboratory also by using any of the three methods. now we will study the physical and the chemical properties of dinitrogen we will study the physical and chemical properties of dinitrogen first of all we will study the physical properties of dinitrogen physical properties now what are the different physical properties of dinitrogen first of all dinitrogen that is n2 is a colorless tasteless and non toxic gas dinitrogen is a colorless tasteless and non toxic gas second thing it is slightly soluble in water it is slightly soluble in water due to its covalent nature due to its covalent nature it is slightly soluble in water next it has low freezing point and boiling point it has low freezing point and boiling point why it has low freezing point and boiling point because the molecules of dinitrogen are held together by weak van der waal force of attraction next it is absorbed by activated charcoal i have written here adsorbed not absorbed there is a difference between adsorbed and adsorbed Absor adsorption and absorption adsorption is a surface phenomena whereas absorption is a bulk phenomena so these are four physical properties of dinitrogen that dinitrogen is a colorless gas it is a tasteless gas and it is non toxic gas dinitrogen is slightly soluble in water because of its covalent nature it has low freezing point and boiling point because the molecules are held together by weak van der waal force of attraction and it is adsorbed by the activated charcoal so these are the four physical properties of nitrogen now we will study the chemical properties of dinitrogen in chemical properties of dinitrogen first of all we will study the action on litmus action on litmus now when we react nitrogen with litmus or when we uh, observe a reaction of nitrogen with lit uh, with litmus nitrogen do not show any reaction with litmus because nitrogen is a neutral gas so on the basis of the action of the litmus we get to know that nitrogen is a neutral gas because it do not show any action with the neutral uh, any action with the litmus so it is a neutral gas second action with metals now nitrogen reacts with highly reactive metals at high temperature to form ionic nitrides nitrogen reacts with 
highly reactive metal at high temperature. Why? Because in our previous video, we have studied that due to multiple bonding, nitrogen is in nitrogen behave as an inert gas. So it reacts with first of all very reactive metals, highly reactive metals. With less reactive metal, it not react at all. It reacts with highly reactive metal. And second thing, it reacts with those reactive metals at high temperature because high temperature is required to break the bond which is present between two nitrogen. So it reacts with highly reactive metals at high temperature to form ionic nitrides. Ionic nitrides. So it reacts with Na on heating means at high temperature to gives what what is nitride Na NaN3 next one is it reacts with lithium LiN3 it reacts with aluminium to form AlN so these are nitrides and these are ionic nitrides because in this the metal is in cationic form and the nitrogen is in anionic form. So nitrogen reacts with highly reactive metal at very high temperature to form ionic hydrides. Now third one action action with non-metals. Now nitrogen reacts with some non-metals also like nitrogen react with hydrogen, nitrogen reacts with oxygen. First of all nitrogen reacts with hydrogen in the presence of Fe2O3 and molybdenum at 700 Kelvin and 200 atm to form ammonia. And this is known as Heber's process. This one is known as Heber's process. So whenever dinitrogen reacts with ammonia, when, uh, sorry, whenever dinitrogen reacts with hydrogen in the presence of molybdenum and iron oxide at 700 Kelvin and 200 atm to form ammonia, the process is known as Heber's process. Similarly, N2 reacts with O2 at very high temperature, that is 3273 Kelvin to 2273 Kelvin at very high temperature to form NO and this process is known as Birkeland and Eid process. Eid process. This process is known as Birkeland and Eid process. So dinitrogen reacts with two non-metals that is hydrogen and oxygen. With hydrogen it reacts at 700 Kelvin to form ammonia and the process is known as Heber's process whereas with oxygen it reacts with 3273 Kelvin to form nitric oxide NO and the process is known as Birkeland and Eid process. Now next We'll, uh, we'll talk about the fourth property and that property is action with alumina in the presence of coke. Means fourth is action with alumina. What is alumina? Alumina is Al2O3. Action with alumina in the presence of coke. Presence of coke. So, dinitrogen reacts with Al2O3 in the presence of coke at 1273 Kelvin to form AlN. To form AlN plus carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. So, dinitrogen reacts with alumina in the presence of coke at very high temperature to form AlN plus CO2. In all the reaction, you are, I think, observing that we required very high temperature. Why we required very high temperature? Because of the reactivity, because of the less reactivity of the dinitrogen. That's why we required very high temperature for breaking the bond which is present between the dinitrogen. Now next, fifth one, reaction with, reaction with, Calcium carbide reaction with calcium carbide means CaC2. Now 
डाई नाइट्रोजन रिएक्ट विद कैल्शियम कार्बाइड टू फॉर्म कैल्शियम साइनामाइट डाई नाइट्रोजन रिएक्ट विद कैल्शियम कार्बाइड एट वन थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड सेवेंटी थ्री कैलविन टू फॉर्म कैल्शियम साइनामाइट टू फॉर्म कैल्शियम साइनामाइट एंड दिस कैल्शियम साइनामाइट दिस कैल्शियम साइनामाइट वेन डिजोल्व इन वॉटर इट प्रोड्यूस एन एच थ्री इट प्रोड्यूस एन एच थ्री एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस दिस इज यूज एज अ फर्टिलाइजर विद द नेम नाइट्रोलिन इन मार्केट वी हैव नाइट्रोलिन एंड दैट नाइट्रोलिन कंटेन सी ए सी एन टू एंड सी वेन वी रिएक्ट दिस विद वॉटर इट गिवस एन एच थ्री plus CaCO3 and this two the combination of these two is known as nitrolin and it acts as a fertilizer it acts as a fertilizer so di nitrogen reacts with calcium carbide at 1273 kelvin to form calcium cyanamide and this calcium cyanamide when reacts with water when reacts with water it forms ammonia and because of this it used as a fertilizer in the uh, is used as a fertilizer by the name nitrolin property is formation of active nitrogen active nitrogen now active nitrogen can be prepared by passing the electric arc through di nitrogen at very low pressure means at 2 mm hg when we pass electric arc mean with the help of the electricity at very low temperature we can convert the n2 into active nitrogen and this active nitrogen reacts with many substances to form some important compound like CH triple bond CH that is ethane. This active nitrogen reacts with ethane to form CN triple bond CN, which is known as cyanogen, and the byproduct is dihydrogen. So, how we can prepare active nitrogen by passing the electric arc through di nitrogen at very low pressure, that is. 2 mm hg we can convert we can convert n2 into 2n and this 2n is active nitrogen and this 2n is active nitrogen and it reacts with a number of substances to form useful compounds so students that's all for today we have studied about the preparation of di nitrogen the physical properties of di nitrogen and the chemical properties of di nitrogen now i'll see you in my next video with a new topic a new interesting topic till then take care and stay healthy